And we're live. Um, we're not, are we? Well, yes, we are. Look, it's playing. It um, won't be live when it goes out. No, it won't be live. It's not recorded. All right, we're recording. Pre-record. We're on air. Um, we're, gives us one. we're pre-recorded live. Right. Shall I say, shall I welcome... Special guest. Special person. Oh, yeah. Very special person. Um, I think someone next to me is very special. Um, he most certainly will go down in GGS history. Um, his work ethic is out of this world. Um, he's just getting started in his career, and I think he's going to achieve some really, really amazing things. So, how are you, Mr. Papworth? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fantastic, Mr. Scott. Well, I'm really good, thank you. I'm really good. We That's do what all, I needed this morning. We do also have the head boy, England under 18 representative, Saracens Academy member, and our first team rugby captain. All of midday, Sudeki. Man Mountain. The Man Mountain. The Man Mountain. Morning, guys. Morning. I listed off all the things that were supposed to happen this week. Oh, yeah. It's quite a lot. We had an under 14 basketball tournament on Saturday, Tongi took. We were supposed to have a game against Fort Pitt and Netball. We had the under 14s playoff against Folkestone. We had a hockey fix, two hockey fixtures this week. Yeah? No. No? I just made that up then. No, we were supposed to have the Kent under under 18s, sevens, at, um, here at Grey's End. We supposed to have the Kent uh, fifth, under 15 sevens. Basketball played Canterbury High. Um, and the cricket next started. Mm. I think that's it. Well, we were supposed to have. Well, a lot of those things didn't happen. Yeah. A lot of those things didn't happen. And yeah. also, you two were out last tag. night celebrating. Oh, yeah, Mo uh, Awards. But the tag rugby coaching on Tuesday, yeah. unfortunately, yeah. the private <clears> schools <throat> were unable to make it this time. But that's kicking on. Cool, I'm holding this thing up here. Anyone got anything else to say? Well, you're well just, all you've done is just list off everything that was meant to happen. Yeah, but that's how this thing works. You're meant to give something back. <laughs> oh, okay. Just... So what do we need to say? Just, just... What do you want to know back? What well, didn't it happen? Snowed. It snowed. Yeah, it snowed as well, yeah. It snowed, it snowed. which is an which amazing experience to have again on a, on, Jews, on a lovely Wednesday morning when the rugby was meant to happen. Are you meant, Do you want me to talk about the rugby again? Well, maybe not too long. Maybe I've just got to give a little bit. We improvised and we adapted, didn't we? So, unfortunately, Fort Pitt didn't come on Wednesday, but oh, yeah. what happened? <laughs> the, uh, Give something back. The rugby, I'm giving too much here. The rugby and some of the football boys, um, one, one, <laughs> some, um, came and played against uh, the girls at netball. Yeah, and yeah. I think there were about three broken noses, a couple of sprained ankles, um, and... Uh, yeah, but it was enjoyable. When I came, when I came on to the, the court, and then when midday came, you just screamed contact, 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 contact every single time. Well, that's because you just bowled. Yeah, I'm not really right. Right. Midday's been so far out of rugby. I you just try and try and speed tackle just, people. Just B&B. It's contact, contact, contact. <laughs> Five centimeters away from this class, contact. Yeah, exactly. Because it's got to be one foot, one, well, three foot, one meter. So your um, your <laughs> first experience in netball isn't something that you're going to no, continue. No, no, no. And you're a good wingspan for it, though. Yeah. yeah. In defence. Yeah. He was a good basketball player in year 11, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. He was a good basketball That's player. That's the tongue. Yeah, he's got yeah. videos. He's got evidence of that. Handlings a little bit. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> working on that, mate. I'm working on that. Who's working on his handlings? <laughs> when, when's the break for the school? That's all it needs to be. Right, exactly. That's all it needs um, to be. Right, so we wanted to centre this conversation. I think Mr. Stanley had the idea of centering it around bouncing back from injury. Um, what uh actually I've, I've, oh no, I've written here sorry the script it's, it's very script. scripted this, though, is, this is this is so scripted um just a bit of perspective Miz. when did you start playing rugby i started playing rugby when i joined during the school so year seven back in year seven so there's actually a rumor going around that um, apparently mr reese was handing out art school detentions for anyone who didn't play rugby <laughs> so obviously me being a little naive year seven <laughs> like came to <laughs> came to tuesday training you know, just gave it a go, Saturday training as well. And then kind of, you know, start to fall in love with the sport. I say by probably year nine, year ten, I was like, Yeah, rugby's my thing. I was like, yeah. And then you started specialising in it. Yeah. Up to that point you had quite a broad range of things that you did. Oh yeah, that's what Stan used to play hockey. Did everything. Goalkeeper. Goalkeeper. I heard the rumour that he was a one man band. Yeah, I was gonna say I'd like to hear more about the one man band. At one point playing the triangle <laughs> onto the drums. Yeah, played a bit of flute, drum. <laughs> Just yeah. yeah. <laughs> He had one of those massive drums in it because he walked in. Yeah. Basketball. Yeah, basketball as well. mm. so we, we have a problem with this, Mitch, on that, on that subject with 
a lot of boys who in year seven are specialising in their sports really early. Mm -hmm. So what would your advice to those be? I think if you specialise specialise in something too early, you kind of close doors elsewhere. So then you don't actually, you know, find your inner calling to that thing. If you if you kind of, you know, what narrow your now your perspective to one thing, then you won't ever find out or know what else you could be good at. And you know, the fact that you can't find your chances. It's all transferable it. skills as well, isn't it? Exactly. Between different sports. Exactly. Basketball, rugby, exactly. link, and hockey and cricket, link. Mm. The one we said, there's so many football players who are so good at rugby. Mm. They've got such good skills. It's just so transferable Speed. skills. There's so many transferable skills between football and rugby. And they mm. could be really good at it. <clears throat> and the amount of football that is played in this country, the chances of making it are so, so low. The most important thing is well, enjoy what you're doing. Like, don't don't put too much pressure on yourself at a young age. Just go and enjoy it. That's, that's the most important thing in sport. It's next on the script then, the next question. No, see, I, I like it. We've got, got, oh, oh, okay. got off script. Off. Sorry, sorry, we are right. 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 Off right. script is good. Is let's, 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 let's add a bit of um, okay. segue into flexibility. It. But do you want me to segue into into the main topic? Of yeah, let's go to the main topic. They'll never know. Um, <laughs> We're ready so, Mitch, <laughs> your current situation? Yeah, so I've been out for like five to six months. Five to six months. Forever. It feels like it told me, it told me about. It. Yeah, I've been out injured for five six months. And how did you do that? Broken fifth met in the what was it? Was it regional? The Vars third round. Third round, yeah. Seven Oaks at home. Seven Oaks at home. Beat them thirty six on the end. You know, broke my foot, you know, what, 50th minute of that. Yeah, that second half, wasn't it? Yeah, so what happened was, I was like, what, just playing the thing off the carry. I was I think like, it was ah. the back of the scrum, wasn't it? Yeah, it's like, ah, oh, my foot hurts a bit. I was like, I thought someone stepped in it, so I carried on playing. And later on, the 10 minutes there, I was like, ah, oh, really, really hurt. And you're like, you know, let me take you off. Yeah. Good coach. Good coach, yeah. Great coach. Ten, play for 10 more minutes, you know, you'll be fine. You'll be absolutely fine. Just run it off. So 10 minutes to go. It's only your foot. Um, and then obviously that has meant that you've been out for quite a prolonged period of time. Yes, yeah. Two operations first. Two operations. Yeah. Um, you've missed some quite significant things because yeah. in the summer you, what did you do in the summer? Uh, yeah, I went to one of England 18s, went to South Africa, got three tests uh, against them. One, one of them lost to the last game, 44 41. Very tough game, very tough game. Yeah. And am I the yeah. right in saying that you're the only player to start all three tests? Uh, one, of, one of two or three. One, one, of, two one or three. of two, wasn't it? You, two, yourself. Two of cousins. Yeah. Two of cousins, yeah. Um, so, it's a massive, massive, yeah. massive achievement. Let's not under, undersell that. I think that's fantastic. Um, what was that experience like, though? Being involved in that situation and and that environment, what was it? Uh, it, was really it was really enjoyable, I think. Playing at elite level sport, I think. The difference is probably between low levels and elite level sports that in that environment, everyone everyone wants to play well. Everyone's looking for that common goal. I think, you know, not to take anything away from, let's say, school rugby or that kind of thing, but a lot of people are just there to have fun. And that can make, that may conflict with other people trying to take that serious or really trying to grow in the sport. So. Mm -hmm. In that um, elite level environment, everyone's got that kind of same goal, same interest to do well, to excel, and to be excellent in what they're doing. So, really found it. Found it was easy to kind of do well and thrive. If everyone's got that same interest, common goal. That's a you. great point. So, if you were a schoolboy player now and you were trying to set yourself apart and you were trying to sort of fulfil the potential you had, what would you, what advice would you give to lads who probably want to set themselves apart from? Maybe the crowd who are people who are just happy to be there. What, what advice would you give? I mean, you've always start somewhere. So, even in that environment, still push yourself. Still, still do those extras that you feel will get you to that kind of next level. So, if that's coming to gym seven a.m. in the morning, or staying late after the train to do a bit of hands or a bit of catch pass, that kind of thing, still do those things because those are the small differences that will set you apart from the crowd. If that makes sense. Little extras. I think that's great. I think mean, that's what it's good that it's coming from you. Um, we speak about it quite a lot as staff and as coach about how we can put drive, you know, that, 
that elite side of what we're trying to do so that the you know, the boys are ready for that next pathway going forward. Um, and do you think everything in terms of the extras have, has helped you grow this year in terms of... I hope just for thinking, as you play at um, a um, level rugby that's high and higher, the difference is on money. It's all that little extra is what kind of sets you apart from everyone. So that old school, that extra one meter in the past they can throw, those are small differences between, let's say, the average player and the, the great player, for example. Yeah. How about like your time management, though? Because you seem to do so many things mm. with your Surrey stuff and your England stuff and head boy head stuff. Head boy, uh, in school captain. One and man band. Triangle. Band. <laughs> Triangle. <laughs> uh, how, as well as your academics, which are also doing well, how do how do you fit all that in? Um, it's hard. I'll be honest, it's hard. It's hard, but kind of. When it's, when it's tough, I have like a vision of like what I think I can get to if I do all these things. And I wouldn't say it's difficult, it's very difficult, but you just kind of have to get it done. If you don't do it, then you just be looking at yourself, ah, oh, I've got a lot, lot of stuff to do, but you know, it's kind of... Where's that motivation? <clears throat> where's it come from? Uh, where's it come from? I think, I know that I've got a lot of potential. Yeah. And that, that kind of, that idea excites me, so. I thought as if I'm how, do you, how do you know? How do you know? I don't know what of potential. Uh, partially maybe people around me yeah. really recognise it. I think having validation from people around you that oh, that's also that's really good. It's good for you, you know. It's good. It's good for good for your mind, good for yourself. And um, after that validation, realising myself that oh, maybe you know this guy is this guy's money. So after realising that, kind of pushes pushing myself. That's quite cool. So you've created like, over time through validation, through different stuff, like it, and and through obviously playing high levels, like an innate belief that I am good enough to do whatever I want to do now, yeah. and I can kick on to do that. Yeah. There'll probably be some people listening as well that sort of like feel that they're not good enough in a team that maybe they're playing in, or they can't get to that next level. Have you ever felt like out of your depth? Oh yeah, hundred percent. So stop like playing rugby. When I started playing rugby at school, twenty seven hear people saying, oh, I started playing rugby since I was four years old, this, that, this, that. I'm still relatively new to the game. Like, I only started playing, what, mm. 11, 12, still like, what, got four or five years of yeah. okay. experience in the game. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, initially it was just fun. It was just yeah. something I enjoyed. So if you, if you put your pressure, if you put that kind of pressure on yourself from early on, then it doesn't do any good to you. So I think just enjoying the experience will lead to you performing. If you have that constant, what's called pressure on yourself, I've got to do well, I've got to do well, then we really enjoy it and then won't necessarily. You said so about uh, performance in that elite environment yeah. um, and that you haven't been playing for that long. So, how are you going to be able to, what are you going to do to be able to cope in that situation, which is about performance, results, um, individual performance, team performance, unit performance, things like that? I think, well, it's uh, kind of, you know, what to think about the reason why I started playing rugby in the first place. So initially that was out of enjoyment. And the reason why I'm kind of in the position I am now was because of my love of the sport. Yeah. So if I can always remember the reasons to why I started playing rugby, I think all those other things will come naturally. The, you know, the will to perform, all this, that and that, will come because I like playing the game of rugby. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> so interesting. I'm just looking at the script. Think about what you're saying, I'm Nick. trying to think about wow. the script because last he's given week, such an insightful answer. Yes, he, he has given them a sort of answer. Just edit this. Wow, um, amazing. <laughs> I'll leave this in. How much <laughs> your coach really cares? <laughs> <laughs> um, Mids knows I care. Mids knows. Yeah, I did hear that on the um, the commentary on the South African. Uh, yeah, the television huge. network Mountain. the man under the tut tutelage of Terry Pepworth. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm taught him everything he needs to do to jump in them lineouts. <laughs> but ask your your personal opinion here. You know that I, you know I, I'm at Gravesend. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, here we go. Mr. Oh, Stock oh, is uh, currently playing playing at, at Sid Cup, who unfortunately have, have been relegated into into Gravesend's league next year. Oh, oh, um, oh. You know, all year Mr. Stock has been explaining, you know, I'm a better player. You know, going to finish sick. Uh, I'm going to finish sick. Hang on, excuse me, I'm talking for you. you know, I'd run over you, I'd smash you. Conveniently, since we've been getting to the to the back end of the season now, he's been very quiet. So incorrect, incorrect. What do you feel the result or how the how the game is going to unfold next year, Patworth versus Stock? 
the big clash. So, see, you've got that <laughs> three times <laughs> for the engine. I love oh. 34 minutes. I am what yeah, that yeah, much yeah, yeah, good, yeah, 34 <laughs> minutes, think what's That's happening. Second, second half, part of, you know, user's pace. Running, uh, you don't know us very well, do you? <laughs> you know, you know, I'm Patworth that stock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've so got an engine. He hasn't got pace. You would use his engine and pace <laughs> to describe me and Mr. Stock. Absolutely, I would. We've not seen Mr. Mini Metro engine in a limit. Hang on, hang on. I'm about to get a really good compliment here from a future England international. This could go a long way for me. We've not seen that Mr. Patworth's acceleration. What zero to sixty in like zero point three seconds? Easy. Zero to sixty. Easy. Miss Patler's yeah. acceleration of two metres is excellent. Thank Past you. that, Thank it's you. pretty poor. That's all I need to score, though, isn't it? Past you. How many have you scored this year? Nine. Oh, well, No, you haven't. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many have you scored? Four. No, you haven't. I have. There you go. See, it's the same, isn't it? Three, straight away, Jason. Three, three genuine tries. Three <laughs> genuine tries. What's the difference what's between a genuine, genuine What's a genuine try? Because yours are at the back of a mall. That's not oh, genuine. Yeah, okay, like, the back yeah. of a mall is not a genuine try. You just piggyback it. So, Patworth versus Stock. Mido, who's your money on? Not the, team, mind, very, very, not the team. Who's your money on? To so have the more physical dominance. No, I'll put my hand up. I'm going to get yellow carded for a high tackle. <laughs> well, um, come, come five four. Right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go over your head. That's the only way you're going under. <laughs> no, I'm excited to see Mr. Stock play. It's because Mids has already seen me play, that's right. Yeah, yeah so he knows your stats. <laughs> <laughs> he can be disappointed when he watches me. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Right, we have just rambled on a bit now. Should we bring it back? Yeah, we went, we went, we went a yeah, long way there. Um, a bit of so, that. Should we Back to the actual content with the news. Back to the actual um, really good run. So, <laughs> one thing I've been pretty impressed with is you seem to have been very upbeat throughout this whole process. Mm. Bearing in mind that the England Six Nations under 18 squad has just been released, yeah. which you, off the off the back of the summer, probably could, would have had, very likely would have been in in that squad. I personally would have been fuming for a very long time, but you seem to be very, I don't know, very mature about it and very. Yeah, initially I was annoyed, you know, quite annoyed with the injury, but. Funny enough, the period, of, well, I'm in your 13th final year of school. So funny enough, that Six Nations period would have been through like Easter, which is a crucial point, I think, in that kind of year 13. So kind of use this injury as an opportunity. So whilst I'm in football sport, out for like five, six months, seven months, kind of use that to focus on school A-levels, get a solid set of results, which allow me to continue playing rugby outside of school. Finding positives. Yeah. Yeah. That's, quite a bit That's pretty impressive. Um, uh, the next question then probably is not as as relevant. How mentally has it been for you coping with 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 that that setback and then sort of the the, the latter stage of it where you realise you were missing sort of the academy block and then Six Nations. So, so yeah, initially, well, it kind of fluctuates. So initially, I was like, ah, oh. because funny enough, the the game I got injured the weekend. That weekend I had a England camp, so mm. yes. I missed that. So initially I was you know, pretty, you know, pretty annoyed. But then I kind of realised, you know what, this injury could be an opportunity. And then initially there was a bit of hope that I could make the final two games. Yeah, before yeah. that initial yeah. scan, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Had a, had a scan drive right before <coughs> that, they said I've you know, got to be out for longer. That was annoying. But then after that I kind of got over it. Um, saw the big positive which was focus on A levels. And yeah, that's what I'm using to fool me through this process. You've had a lot of work with physios. Have they said anything about preventing injury in the future and what you can do to, and what might have caused it in the first place? Yeah, so there's a lot of... You've been talking about um, foot stuff. Yeah. So I've got... I suffer from flat feet. Yeah. I think, um, so the main focus was around getting my feet stronger. So Elie Kipchoge, mm -hmm. marathon world record. Yeah. yeah. He's got flat feet as well, but he's got some of the strongest feet and that prevents him from having those injuries. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. How, how has he got strong feet? What like So all the young listeners that wanting to prevent injury in, per, in the first place, what can they do to strengthen their feet? Uh, Have you been told? Yeah, there's a lot of foot intrinsic exercises. So kind of moving your big toe individually, controlling that, developing arches or strengthening your arches in your foot. And then a lot of the muscles, a lot of the perineal muscles, so on the outside of your calf, so just kind of flexing them forward 
and that would that help with them. So it sounds like a lot of sort of small movements yeah. in a gym instead yeah, so all of the, all those your... small muscles, so all those big, big carved thighs, and that's like that. All those yeah. kind of small muscles, they're all they're all important in prevention. The big, big way to do that as well, to strengthen your feet naturally, is to go around in bare feet as much yeah. as you possibly can because that strengthens your feet. Yeah. And a lot of shoes that are designed to keep your foot still are actually not good for the strength of your foot. So get yourself in bare feet and walk around bare feet as much as possible. Mr. Believe, would love believe it. Yeah. Yeah. This, it's it's true, it's really it. true. Believe it or not, Mr. Robinson used to teach me, um, make for quite a lot. Oh, um, and he went for a, this was like, went for a st- yeah, I do remember them. Of course I remember them. Oh, went for sorry. a stage of wearing Flat feet. Uh, they, shoes. they were like, no, they were like, they were basically plimp soles, and they had outcuts for his toes. Yeah, oh, yeah five. They were horrendous. Yeah, five, five, that, five uh, toes. And was that yeah. before, uh, before CrossFit? Oh no, he's always been CrossFit. Yeah, isn't yeah. He? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, back to it again. Back to yeah, it. Bare feet. Um, I, I have. I probably have a, a final. <laughs> Walk around bare feet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wear bare feet. I, I have a, a final question then, for, for you, mids. Throughout your whole, whole, whole sort of rugby program or, or your whole time at GGS how do how can we inspire the next the next midday how can we what can we do or what what would you like to see the program go to to inspire those those next players the, next connect, the connection the connection between the first team and Lord Island School so when I was in your seven year a, everyone looked at the first team star eyes mm. then you realise when you're in your seven yeah that's the pinnacle. That's that's your next England. That's your closest England, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So I think we've started it already. So yeah. integrating the senior team to the lower team and that, that kind of inspires that brings that energy. To that's team. great answer. What what happened which we didn't actually talk about last week, what happened last Saturday? The year seven. Oh, the year seven yeah, oh. sorry, I bash the head. Uh, yeah, the year seven's obviously talking at um Dartford, you know. Ben Reeve, Joel Kane, come along, do some coaching. Boys loved it. Really, I think, really brought into the fact that two senior rugby players were were there to help out. Um, Not just with the rugby, the bar. No, yeah, yeah no, with everything. Boys. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sort of. Yeah. Perfectly. I've I've got so we've got two bits to go, which obviously we're having so much fun. Yeah. We want to keep going because um, Midday's we've insight is probably showing us. Yeah, yeah we do need to teach. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> highlight of the week. So hi- highlight, highlight of the week, week for you. Oh, Stay in my script. Highlight of the week. Has anyone got any nominations? Because I've actually written down a nomination. Has anyone got any nominations from what they've seen throughout this week as a highlight of the week in terms of sporting highlight? No, good not thing. Just everything being cancelled. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, some things weren't cancelled. Everything right? outside was cancelled. So what happened inside then, Mister? Uh, inside, highlight. inside, highlight inside uh, in the warm and dry. Um, we just had the basketball, yeah, and then we all, and we had the first team cricket. Which was or, nice. well, it wasn't first team; it was it was senior squad and then junior squad. You've been talking nice about. Nice paper because well, no. Sorry, come on, left out, left out. Open the basketball. Even think you managed to do everything: bat, bowl, wicket keep. Oh, big good wicket keep. You know, loads of ground. You always want the six six. You got a video of midday bowling, and you bowled some out, but it is all limbs. It is limbs everywhere. Inside swinging bow. <laughs> Golf's the next we, one, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Apparently, yeah. Putting in South Africa such quite a good idea. Yeah. I <laughs> I'll just putt, lads. <laughs> um, my, sorry, my, my, my highlight of the week, I thought, was um, Dan Awani, one of our under-14 basketball players, didn't even play the last quarter on, on Tuesday because he was doing pretty well and he scored 30 points. Mm. Um, quite a bit and then, the tongue. And then we had... Yeah, was, yeah what, I, I was coaching. Well, obviously, yeah, amazing. What was um, that? And then we had notable performances from people like... Um, Moise was really good. Um, Matthias was really good, and and Freddie Warman as well was absolutely excellent. Um, Are they in the quarterfinals or the? Yes, yeah, so they've got se- so semi. So we got one more game next week um, against Canterbury, yeah. um, and then if we win that, we'll go through to the finals. Then. Um, Shout so. out to the under 16s last night who won by a point in their quarterfinal. Yeah. Yeah. Did they? They did. Yeah. Against who? Bullers Wood. Oh, great. So yeah, they came Final down possession, there. Mr. Tong said, weren't yeah. it? Final possession. Who scored? Just seven oh, seconds. I don't no, know. They, they were up. They were oh, up. They were up and they defended seven, seven seconds seven to defend seconds. the shot. Oh, amazing. Oh, oh, this amazing. Is this oh, class. Yeah. Um, so on this, we like to do mid a culture segment. So I thought, rather than us trying to explain something that we didn't really explain very well last week, did we, Mr. Robinson? Have you done any research on the two percent? No. 
No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's written on the door and everyone else. <laughs> yeah. just, just B2%. Just, uh, just B2%. Yeah. Uh, so, mid. Yeah. Bear in mind, we have about a minute and a half left. Um, while you're at Saracens, um, I was wondering if you could give us a bit of an insight into the, sort of the culture that's made them so successful and, and what you've picked up in your time of being there. Yes, it's really everywhere in the clubs. So there's four key values. So honesty, discipline, work rate and humility. And that's driven into players from when they walk in at the academy. So those four key values have it into us. And that kind of, you know, because it's filtered down so low in the club, I think that kind of, that stays within you and progresses as you, you know, I think it'd be something we could apply yeah. a little bit here, definitely. We tried to instill one of your army things, which was uh, selfless commitment, mm. which I thought was quite a good phrase to coin. Which I think is starting to come through. Yeah. Starting to come through, you know, giving up people's, people giving up their own time to help out other people. Mm. I, you know, looking at the, the senior boys coaching, primary schools, starting to give up their time for other people. So it's starting to, to seep through. Wow. Amazing. I think that was 40 minutes worthwhile so thank you very much Mids thank and you. Thank we'll you. be back next week with another guest big hitter next week another, big hitter another. they will find out next week <laughs> 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 so will I <laughs> <laughs> right, done guys well, see you next time yeah. see you next time